Amen. I want to talk to you today, if you're in Isaiah chapter 40, let's say it together, Lord, Lord. may the word change me. We're going to talk today in the idea of waiting with anticipation. Verse number 28, if you're there, let's do it together. Have you not known, have you not heard the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, never faints, nor is he weary. His understanding is unsearchable. Let me read verse 28 again just so that everybody gets and comprehends the greatness of our God. Have you not known, have you not heard the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth? Say it, church. He never faints nor is weary. His understanding is unsearchable. In other words, he's going to understand things that your human mind will never comprehend. He gives power to the weak and to those who, there you go, shout it out. He gives power to the weak and to those who have no might, he increases strength. Even the youth shall fail and they will faint and they'll be weary and the young men shall utterly fall. But those who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Come on, let's read verse 31 again. But those who wait upon the Lord shall, that's a command, shall, will renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not get weary. They shall walk and not faint. Amen. Now these are some great set of scripture that have been misperceived over time. And I want to go back up before I get into verse 31. I want to look at 28 again and, and help us to understand that even if we are tired, even if we are weak, Verse 28 says that he never faints, nor does he ever get weary. God never needs a break. <clears throat> he never needs time off. He never needs PTO. He never needs vacation. Amen. And his understanding is unsearchable. In other words, we can try the very best that we can try, but we'll never completely understand the ways and the things of God. I, I have had many people want me to explain all of the Bible. And if I can just be honest with you, there are things that I still cannot comprehend. And I think it is by God's design that we not understand everything. There are a few mysteries in the Bible that will be revealed on the last day. We know that. Amen. But he goes on to say... That even the young people are going to faint and even the young people are going to get tired. But those who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. In other words, that's a promise. Those who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not get weary. They shall walk and not faint. And about this time, the people who are impatient in waiting are thinking to themselves, I can't believe he's going to preach a sermon about telling me to wait upon the Lord. But I want to tell you today, your definition and your perception of waiting has been, really, it's been wrong for a lot of people. I was always, I, I heard so many people in church growing up say, don't you ever dare pray for patience. Anybody ever heard that before? Don't you ever, how many of you said it? Don't raise your hand. You know you're here. People say, don't ever pray for patience. You see, our definition of waiting is not getting what I want and need when I want and need it. That's our definition of waiting. Our definition of waiting is that we would be sitting in a room and it would be dark and we would be trying to stare at black walls and we would just be there depressingly staring at nothing while waiting on something that may or may not come. That's, that's what we've been almost taught that waiting is. But I'll promise you this morning that if you understand the biblical definition of wait, or even if you get out your phone right now and go, go to the Webster's Dictionary, that that is not the definition of wait. Can I give you this morning God's definition of what it means to wait? It means having faith and hope while remaining steady in anticipation and expectation. I'm going to say that again just so all of you get it. To wait on the Lord means that you continue in hope, and you continue in faith 
while remaining ready in expectation and anticipation. It means that you may be waiting on something, but you're ready and anticipating that what you're waiting on could show up any moment. Waiting on God is not sitting in a dark room staring at walls depressed and wondering when will my God show up. Waiting does not mean that you cry yourself to sleep every night. Waiting is this. I have faith and I trust God that what has not come is coming. I don't know when it will be delivered, but I have complete faith that everything God has said is mind is on its way and it may not be here but I'm getting ready for it I'm I'm I'm, I'm leveling up my land I'm widening my driveway I'm, I'm I'm checking I got my card from my bank account here I'm ready to call my doctor it may not be here yet but those that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength they shall mount up with wings as eagles they shall run and not get weary they shall walk and not faint waiting on God is sitting back being calm without complaint having faith and having trust amen in readiness and expectation you see waiting without expectation is what we've been trained to believe patience is while you wait but really you're not expecting anything good real patience and real waiting in Isaiah 40 31 the real waiting is actually you are having expectation and faith that everything God has said will come to pass now, how many of us have been blinded by the idea that waiting and patience is a depressing idea? Here's the problem. Look at verse 31. Put that up there for me, guys. Here's your problem. You, you've been convinced that waiting and patient means to go into a place, sit down and be depressed while you wait for something. If that were true, why would he go on and say those that run will not get re weary and those who walk will not faint? He is saying you're going to wait, but you're going to wait while you're moving. You're going to wait while you're doing. You're going to wait while you're still flying. It doesn't mean that you stop and you allow anxiety and depression to overtake you while you wait. Those that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. How can you renew your strength? Because I'm still moving like whatever God has already promised is going to show up just any moment, any moment right now. I'm still running and I'm still walking. I am not giving up. You see, patience in a lot of people, they've been taught that, that if you wait upon the Lord, it's like that, that you're giving up. And I'm here to tell you today that is a lie because you are expected to continue to run and continue to walk while you expectantly with anticipation wait and believe upon the Lord because the Lord shall renew your strength. How many of you know there's a due season? Mm, but those that wait upon the Lord, I'm going to read it again, shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall what? Run. Wait, 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 wait. We've been taught that waiting upon the Lord meant to sit down, be quiet, don't say anything, don't praise God, don't clap your hands, don't tithe. I might even not go to church, honey. The devil has lied to you. The children of Israel marched around Jericho waiting. See, we, we miss that sometimes. While they were doing what God said do, they were waiting still on the promises of God. Sometimes the reason we miss is we do sit down while we wait. God wants you to get up and get going. God wants you to get out of your seat. God wants you to get your praise on. He wants you to open up your mouth with a sacrifice of praise. There is nowhere in God that he says that you need to stop while you wait. You need to tell yourself, get up and go. Mm, but they shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not get weary. They shall walk and not faint. Let me say this one more time. God's definition of wait is that you would have faith and hope while remaining in readiness and expectation. That's what waiting means. Expectant anticipation when nothing is happening. And anticipation... 
an expectation even when nothing is happening? Are you willing to walk around the walls of Jericho even when you have not yet obtained the promise, but you know if you keep waiting upon the Lord, He shall renew your strength. Lord, this don't make no sense to me. Are you still willing to have expectant anticipation even when nothing is happening? I haven't got you just yet. Are you willing to have steadfast faith even when you can't see what you're looking to see? Are you willing to wait upon the Lord in hope and trust and faith when the doctors say it doesn't look good? Are you willing to hope and trust and keep on keeping on even whenever the bank says there's no way we can give you that loan? Are you willing to keep on keeping on even whenever the world tells you that you need to sit down and be quiet? Amen. Are you willing to keep on keeping on even whenever you've been unfriended on by all your friends on Facebook? Are, are you still willing when you come to church and you don't feel like having a praise? Are you still willing to keep on keeping on even though you can't see what you want to see and feel what you want to feel, but yet you'll rely upon the word that says those that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They'll mount up with wings like eagles. They'll run and not get weary. They'll walk and not faint. Are you willing to keep on keeping on even when you can't touch it, but yet you know it is there? I need somebody to preach with me today. Waiting in hope even when it seems like all hope is lost. Amen. How many of you have been to the end of your road where it seemed like that you should stop hoping, but something down deep on the inside of you will not let you give up on the hope that God placed on the inside of you. And he is here today to remind you that hope is worth waiting for. Amen. That love is worth waiting for. That the glory of God is worth waiting for. That God's blessing is worth waiting for those that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength I know some of y'all are tired right now but if you don't you don't get tired in in doing good and you don't get weary in doing in doing the things of God there is a due season where you shall reap amen maybe I'm just preaching to myself today I don't know maybe 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 none of y'all know what it's like to wait Maybe you guys get what you pray for right when you pray for it. Maybe I'm not talking to a group of people who have some struggles every once in a while. So I'm glad the Lord gave me this message just for me. Because I kind of feel like if I was sitting in that seat and somebody was preaching this sermon, it'd be hard for me to sit in my seat. Because God would be encouraging me just to hold on just a little while longer. I know, baby, that right now the winds are blowing. And and I know that that the forecast calls for a hurricane. Amen. But weeping may endure for the night. But praise God, that's not the end of the story. Because joy comes in the morning for those who are willing to wait upon the Lord. But you got to wait the right way. Amen. Somebody shout out, wait the right way. way. There's a right way uh, to wait and there's a wrong way to wait. Amen. Amen. I'm waiting yet running. If you've stopped running, you've given up on waiting. I'm waiting while I'm walking. If you give up walking, if you're sitting at home right now and you've just, you've just decided to give up, you, 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 you've lost the ability to know what it means to wait upon the Lord. I'm, I'm waiting, but I'm running. I'm waiting, but I'm walking. I'm waiting, but yet I'm still praying. And I'm waiting, but yet I'm still giving. I, I'm waiting, but yet I'm still going. And I'm waiting, but yet I'm still loving. I'm waiting, but praise God, I'm still serving. Well, how can you do that and wait at the same time? Because God told me that in my waiting are the promises. Amen. If I, if I can believe in what I cannot see, and if I can march around the wall and say nothing, God said, he'll bring the wall straight down and everything that he said is mine is on the inside of my ability to wait upon the Lord. Mm. Yeah, just for me, man. 
Everything I need is in my ability to wait. Because if I wait the wrong way, then I'm disobedient. If I wait in complaint, I'm disobedient. If in my waiting, I give up on running and walking and, and going and loving and serving and praying. If I've given up on all those things, then I'm already in disobedience. And truly, I'm waiting on something that now cannot come. The only way it can actually come is if I continue to go while I wait. Continue to preach while I wait. If I, if I refuse to preach every time I didn't get something that I wanted, I wouldn't preach very often. But there's a requirement that I continue to go even when I'm not getting what I'm waiting for. There's a... A requirement to continue to, to pray and to love and to serve and to run and to do and to even praise God. There's a requirement for me to, to stop looking like I'm sucking on lemons in the worship service, amen, just because I can't see or touch what God has promised, amen. My obedience is that in waiting I'm still doing. Lamentations 3 and 25 says the Lord is good to those who wait for him. The Lord is what? Good to those who wait for him. To those that seek him. To the soul that seeks him. We know the Bible says that if you seek him with your whole heart, that you'll find him. The Lord is good to those who wait for him. Mm. Anybody waiting? The Lord is good to those that wait. You see, let me give you guys the word that nobody likes, patience. We have a misunderstanding of patience. Patience is waiting without complaining. Wait, patience <clears throat> is the ability to remain steadfast while you wait. So it's important if you're going to talk about patience that you understand what it means to wait. And we've already discredited man's idea of what it means to wait and to be patient. God's idea is this. I'm going to say it one more time that we have faith and trust and we continue to believe and we remain in readiness and expectation while we wait. And if I can wait without, with, without uh, or with patience, it means I can do all of that without complaining. <clears throat> I can walk. Without telling God just how tired I am. <clears throat> I can love without reminding God how mean they've been to me. I can give without telling God just how broke tithing's going to make me. I can praise without telling my neighbor just how much this is hurting my body. You see, patience is a characteristic of love, and it is a virtue of the, of the fruit of the Spirit. If you don't have patience, then you really may not have salvation at all. It's the ability to believe when you can't see, amen, to keep going when it doesn't feel good to raise your hands, even when your situation tells you to stay home, amen, and get mad and throw in the towel and get all upset, amen. I... I I'm going to just wait upon God because I believe if I wait that I've got a new season. Somebody may say, well, preacher, what, what does it look like? How many people in this room have ever been pregnant before? Raise your hand. I don't see any guys raising their hand. Thank the Lord. <laughs> it takes nine months from conception to birth. Are you, are you, do I have your attention just for a few moments? And the nine months that you are dealing with this child is different for every person who carries. It's different for everybody. Some people fly through it like nothing's going on. And the rest of you want to slap them. 
Some people regurgitate their way all the way through. Some people get so emotional <clears throat> that air don't even want to be next to them. <laughs> Pregnancy will keep you up at night. Pregnancy will bring you joy and hatred in the same minute. <clears throat> Pregnancy will allow you the moments of feeling the kick. The kick is just the sudden reminders that something great is happening. But then sometimes that same kick will cause so much pain. It depends on where the kick is at. If you want to just kick right out here, we're good to go. You keep kicking my bladder, I'm going to whip you right now before you even come out. <laughs> or you start getting kicked right in the ribs, punching right in the ribs. And you, you will... Ooh, thank you, Lord. You'll even change your habits during this pregnancy. Those that drink, hopefully will stop drinking. Smokers, most of them will stop smoking. A baby will save drug addicts sometimes because it's the only thing that will get them to stop doing drugs. Not all of them, but... But you'll change your eating habits on behalf of that child. You'll, you'll change behavior and you'll change where you go. Uh, listen to me now. You'll change the people you hang out with. You, you'll change what time you go to bed. You'll change what you eat. You'll change all of these things because there's something growing on the inside. I'm here to tell you today that waiting and patience is the same thing as pregnancy. There's a conception on the inside of you. You may not be able to see it yet. You don't even know what gender it is. You don't know what hair color it's going to have. You don't even know what the eyes look like. Amen. But I know that in nine months something is coming. Amen. Therefore, I'm going to wait upon the Lord so he'll renew my strength. I don't, I don't know what's coming. But I'm going to keep going and I'm going to keep trusting. I'm going to take classes. I'm going to change my environment. I'm going to change my friends. I'm going to change my food. Why? Because I know even though I can't see it, even though I can't touch it, even though I can't smell it, I know that what God is preparing is greater than me. Amen. And I know if I wait upon the Lord... I know that if I wait upon the Lord, you see, because man-made patience and man-made waiting, you can't feel it kick. You, 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 you've just given up on believing that it's there. But God-given patience and God-given waiting will allow you every once in a while to get a glimpse of what's on the other side. I know I can't give up now. You see, the reason some of us, come on, Holy Ghost, the reason some of us have not gotten where we need to get to is because we can't afford the ability to wait upon the Lord. Therefore, we abort what God has given us because we can't, we can't wait and we just can't give God the ability to trust God. Even in the middle of the storm, even in the middle of the hardest days of my life, we, we give up the ability to believe the things of God. Somebody said, what is the will of God? I'm here to tell you this morning, the will of God is the Word of God. And the Word of God says that you are the head and not the tail. The Word of God says you are above and not beneath. The Word of God says that if you'll hold on just a little longer, that God will renew your strength and you will mount up like wings of eagles. You will run and not get weary. You will walk and not faint. Somebody ought to say, wait upon the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Another thing that scares people in waiting is because you, some of you know that delivery is going to hurt. Amen. 
But this is the picture of waiting. This is the picture of patience. Some of us, we get, we get to the birth. And we, oh Lord, I don't know about this. God puts a call up on your life. It is time to stop running. It is time to do what God has called you to do. It is time to do what thus saith the Lord. I know you're afraid of giving birth, but God is saying if you'll give birth to this thing, that your best days are in front of you, not behind you. Your best days are in front of you, not behind you. The glory days in which you seek are in front of you. They are not behind you. But you have had your water break, but yet you refuse because you are so afraid of what God is looking to birth in your life. I've waited, but now I'm afraid. And sometimes it is fearful to bring something into the world to be to be the first time that I've ever done this or that I've ever done that, to be the first, yeah, it's a, it can be a little fearful, but never be afraid of what God is looking to do in your life. Never be afraid because if God, amen, if God calls you, He'll qualify you, amen, and if God qualifies you, He will anoint you, and you let God do the work. You let God, I know you're afraid. I, I, don't, I don't know if I want to take medicine. Do I, want to, do I want an epidural? Do I want a natural birth? Honey, it does doesn't matter. Just let God allow birth to happen in your life. You have waited upon the Lord. Now don't be afraid. Go ahead and push. Because you've been waiting with anticipation. The Lord is good to those who wait upon Him. Now don't be afraid. Start having those contractions. And there's a, a tug between this and that. And you don't know what to do and you don't know which path to take. Listen, the only path that will take you anywhere is God's path. Yes. And those contractions. I know I'm talking to at least about 12 people in this room and two or three of you are just like, man, he is preaching to me right now. You are miserable in your life and it's the contractions. You are at birth and God is waiting to birth a great thing in your life and I'm telling you right now, you're either going to abort it or you're going to birth it and until you do one or the other, you're going to keep having those contractions. It's going to hurt like hell, baby. It's going to feel like you're in a bed of fire and you can't sleep and you can't think and God is saying either give birth or abort it but one or the other is going to take place because contractions cannot happen the rest of your life get in, get out, get run over amen but God is saying today those that wait upon the Lord will renew their strength they're going to mount up with wings as eagles they are going to run amen they're going to take the word of God and do great things they're going to take the talent God has done and do great things they They'll run and not get weary. They're going to walk and not faint. Somebody needs to know today and just go ahead and say, boy, I'm pregnant. Now the men can say, I'm pregnant. <laughs> they that wait upon the Lord. Those of you that have been waiting, go ahead and say, the Lord is good to those that wait. But there's a point where the Lord is done waiting and it's time to give birth. And there will be a point that if you don't give birth after so long, you will cause a forced abortion of what God is trying to birth. And then you wake up one day. Quick little story. I had a great uncle one time. My dad tells me this story. My family have told me this story. All these great revivals in southern West Virginia. And I had this uncle that went to a revival and he cried every night. He cried every night, but they could not get him to go to the altar. Just come to the altar. Just come to the altar. Just come to the altar. And on, on one of the last nights of the revival, they, they came to him. They're just like, come to the altar. And he, he told him, he said, I'm not crying this time because I feel to go. I'm crying because I no longer feel the call to go. 
there is a season to wait, but there is a season where God will move on. If he says, walk around this wall seven, seven times, seven days, 13 times, and all, all these different things. If he says, walk around, around this wall, and on, on, the, on this certain day, shout with a great shout. That means that on that certain day, you've got to shout. If you do it on the sixth day or the eighth day, it doesn't work. How many of you know that? Amen. Come on. We've got to be obedient with what God says. It's not my idea or man's idea. This is a God thing. If God says we're going to the other side, it matters not what happens on the river. While we're there, we're going to the other side because God said we're going there. If Jesus said in three days I'll rise, guess what? In three days he's going to rise. Amen. He is not weary in his journey. He does not faint in his journey. God knows exactly the beginning from the end. God knows everything everything. There's not one jot in this word. There's not one thing going on in your life that God is not aware of. Amen. But he wants you to hear him. He wants you to obey him and he wants you to do it his way, not your way, not the preacher's way, not the church way. It's got to be God's way. Hmm. The Lord won't let me go of this pregnancy thing. And some people get to the end of their pregnancy and they try to plane it the way that they want to plane it. I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. I'm going to go here, I'm going to, this doctor, that hospital. We're going to have it in this, this period of time. We're going to do this and I want these people there and that person here. And, and, and we, we, we have it all planned out. Aren't, aren't we good as church people at planning the pregnancy that God has placed within us? Well, well, he's called me to preach. I'm going to preach to thousands and I'm going to, I'm going to pastor the biggest church in town. <laughs> <laughs> you ain't got a clue, fool. You ain't you ain't got a clue. It's like, man, you like 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 the be the best thing you can do is say, God, God's impregnated me with something great, and here I am. Lord, send me, and I'll go. Yeah. But you've done and decided I'm, I'm gonna go here, and I'm gonna have this doctor, and I want these people in the room, and I want the temperature to be a, a nice seventy-one and a half, and I want this blanket and that teddy bear, and I want this person to call, and whenever we have the baby, this person is gonna text this many people, and you're gonna put it on Facebook, and you're gonna be Twitter, and you're gonna be Snapchat, and 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 we're gonna go home, and we're gonna do this, and we're gonna do that, and we're, we're you you guys know that we we we've got it all planned out, and and and, and you're you're just sitting in your house, and you're just like, oh my goodness, in Two weeks is whenever I'm going to deliver. And about the time you say that, God says, no, my timing and not your timing. And all of a sudden, your water breaks and God says, I'm in control. You are not in control. You're going to let go of this thing. And all of a sudden, you say to yours, and the contractions, the contractions start coming. And, and you're just like, oh, but i got to go to that hospital. And the ambulance says, honey, we may not even make it to the hospital. You're going to have a, you're going to have a birth right here. Amen. I'm telling you, there are some things that you can plan. There are some things that you cannot plan. What you are is you are along for the ride. You are along for the obedience of God. You have got to let go and let God do what he wants to do in your life while you wait. How many of you know you can't control things while you wait? Amen. But I know the man who can. I, I don't know who. I don't know what tomorrow holds, but I know who holds tomorrow. Amen. I, 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 don't, I, don't, I don't know all the things of life, but I, I don't know where I'm going to go, what I'm going to do. But I know who's in the driver's seat, and it's not me. His name is Jesus Christ. Go with me to, to the book of Psalms. Man alive. Whew. Psalm chapter 40, if you would do that with me briefly. Anybody getting anything from the word today? Whew. As usual, it's coming out differently than what I anticipated. When it comes time to preach, I wait with anticipation upon the Lord. Psalm chapter 40, if you're there, shout amen. I waited patiently for the Lord. Boy, just right off the bat, huh? I waited patiently for the Lord, and He inclined to, to me, and He heard my cry. He brought me up. He brought me up out of a horrible pit, out of the miry clay, and set my feet upon a rock, and He established my steps, we heard this verse 3 this morning, and he put a new song in my mouth. Praise to our God. Many will see it and fear it and will trust in the Lord. Verse number 1, I waited patiently for the Lord, and he inclined to hear. He heard my cry and brought me up out of a horrible 
pit. I got bad news for y'all, but I got good news. The majority of the time when you're waiting upon the Lord, it is not usually at the beach. It is, it is not usually at, at, at a pristine, ideal vacation spot. Amen. Usually when you're waiting upon the Lord, it's at a place that's not real comfortable. But the thing about it is, is you're waiting so that you cannot be comfortable. You're waiting to give birth to something new. You're waiting to go into a new season. You're waiting to do a new thing. God is looking to do something great in you. So you're, you're not there to wait in, in, in good things all the time. But it doesn't matter where you are. If you wait the way the Lord tells you to wait, every place is good. Amen. Because everything, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. So whether you're on the mountain or the valley, it all belongs to the Lord. I'm blessed in the valley as well as I am on the mountaintop. Amen. He's the same God in the valley as he is on the mountaintop. Amen. If I don't go to the valley sometimes, I'll never learn what the valley's like. Amen. But the Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want. He leads me. Through the valley, amen. And listen, I, I I may even have ideas of death down there, amen. But I don't fear any evil, for He is with me. Even in the valley, God is good. Amen. Whew. I waited patiently for the Lord. He inclined to me and heard my cry. He also brought me up out of a horrible pit, out of the miry clay, and He set my feet up on the rock. When the waiting is over, God will establish you in great things. Amen. And He established my steps. You've got to wait upon the Lord. You've got to trust the Lord. You've got to believe Him. You've got to have hope where there seems to be no hope. But I'm telling you today, if you wait upon the Lord and you do it His way, that your best days are in front of you. Amen. How many of you know what it's like for the Lord to set your feet upon a rock and establish your steps? Amen. And I'm going to tell you something. How many of you know, yes Lord, I hear you. How many of you know that sometimes it doesn't matter what hell you went through, through the pregnancy and through the birth. When you hold that baby, everything else fades, amen, as a faint memory. How many of you know that when you hold that baby? Amen. amen. Whoo. Yeah. Isn't it funny that in month number six, you were ready to choke everybody in your life? <laughs> After birth, you couldn't even remember m month number four, five, six, seven, eight, because all you know right now is God's best is in my life. Amen. All you know now is God's... Gr when you look into the eyes and you behold that child and you hear that cry, you realize that what you have anticipated, what you have expected is now here. Amen. And some people may look and say, too much hair, too little hair, too big a head, too big a fingers, too skinny, too... Boy, that's a big old baby. It doesn't matter what that baby looks like because that's your baby. And to you, that's the best looking baby that this world has ever seen. Amen. You may be going through a rough time right now, but if you wait upon the Lord, when you give birth in your life, you will not care where God took you and what God took you through. All you know now is look at the baby God has birthed in me. Amen. I stand before you as a pastor today because this is a baby that God birthed in me. Amen. This is something God birthed in me. I stand before you with all of the gifts and the talents that I have. They are not mine. They are things that God birthed in. It's like, oh, well, you're, you're just on the mountaintop right now. You're doing this and you're doing that. Baby, let me tell you, it wasn't long ago I was getting kicked in the ribs. It, it wasn't long ago that the things I wanted to eat, I couldn't eat. It, it wasn't that long ago that the places I wanted to go, I couldn't go. Why? Because God is continuously conceiving new things in me. God, I, I'm 41 years old. I can't tell you how many times God has made me give birth. 19 and counting, pfft, I, they ain't got nothing on me, amen, because but those I'm going to speak to some people right now but those that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength they shall mount up with wings like eagles they shall run and not get weary. They shall walk and not faint. 